back to the show. Thank you so much for watching Fresh Brew. Once again, I'm Brendan and this is Zoe right here. And now we are going to talk about something which is uh, quite interesting. Right? Yes, but first I want to ask you, when you were in school, right? Um, how was music class for you? It was the best thing ever because we didn't do much. <laughs> Yeah. You just play the flute, play all over. It's called a recorder, by the way. Yeah. Play all and all over again, you know, and then that's it. Mm. I got an A. It, an A just to because you attended. Anyways, yes, yeah. Music. But yeah, I remember, you know, like like you said, growing up, um, music wasn't such a big part of yeah, our ed, uh, school education system. But I do think it should be though, because at the end of the day, you know, with us moving into 2020 and you know the current generation that we have, they are more interested in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, that's why here in Fairview International School, they actually just opened up a new art space. It was so amazing. We shot there last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me just tell you, I wish I had the auditorium when I was in school. Oh man, I think I missed out on that. Yes. But if you have missed out on that, don't forget to go to our Facebook page and you can see it right there, okay? Exactly. And science has also proven that music brings out the best in kids. Yes. Yes, it does. And that's why here on the set, we have representatives from uh, Fairview International, International School, uh, one from the Wong San Maju campus and one from the Ipo campus. We have Kristin and Michelle. So Hi, Zoe. thank Hi, you so much for being on the show. Um, super duper excited. So Kristen, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk okay. to you first. Like I said, we you, basically you just spearheaded a new project over yeah. here at the Fairview International uh, Wong San Maju, right? Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah. Um, I came here five years ago, um, and as you can tell, not local. Um, so I came across from, from London, mm -hmm. and I was asked from Fairview International, the chairman of Fairview International, can we a, have a specialism? I was like, okay, how would you like to do this? And that's where the specialism music started to, to branch. And the specialism music in Fairview is all five campuses, and it's for all children from the ages, the minute they come in, of the ages of five, all the way up until the days that they're going either into DP, which is the higher end, or whether or not they're finishing in NYP, which is the secondary end, and go through. So they take their musical instruments all the way through and they take the learning all the way through, but it's every single student, everybody. So how to do that, and well, that was my first project, you can imagine, wow. But then what you're sitting in where you've been walking around yeah. is my second project. And that one is not just for music. So with Dominus, it's all five art forms. And this one is for everybody, not just the Fairview community. So all ages, all styles of arts, and everybody, whether it is on this side of the city or from the other side of the state, do not mind. That's, that's my second one. So that's where it all started from, Creative Bubble. Creative right. Bubble. So how has it been so far? in terms of do we have figures or we already have talented students out there who's expressing yeah. it on stage and all that? Yeah, um, not on the theatrical stage, they're taking more on the music side because the music is a specialism with the Fairview. Mm -hmm. um, the dominus part of it, we've got to wait and see. We are brand new, we've just opened the doors, right. so let's see. But when it comes to um, Fairview, yes, we're seeing musicians two ways. We're seeing musicians which are families from other states all over the place who are coming to Fairview because of the specialism, so their talent is flying and then at the same time you've got the others which are flourishing you can imagine if you've got a five or six year old in an Ipo campus mm -hmm. and playing on the piano and playing like every key going for memory and then suddenly go oh I just made this up and you're like what <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly they mix in with their friends in Jopo campus and JB and suddenly you've got a five and six year old violinist and a trombonist and all of them going oh yeah I'll play along that's what I mean, that cultivating of just open ideas, it's just like a bubble and that's what I mean. So it's flying from different ages, different styles, whether it's composing, performing, editing their own music, mix, mobile phone, ringtones, you name it, they do it. It's really quite inspiring. All right, so Michelle, um, you're actually the head of school or um, our term is actually principal, mm -hmm. but in IBU, you, you use head of school, right? Yeah. Um, over at Fairview in Ipo. I noticed that most international schools do have a mandated or required music program. Um, so how important, in your opinion, is music for students? Well, uh, we want to talk about importance of music education. Uh, I think this is something that people can't really um, contradict, right? Because there are so many research and uh, facts supporting the importance of music in the kids. Um, for example, now we spend thousands of money on slimming products, on 
getting our kids uh, to a course. Getting our kids to a course which supposedly will help them to become motivated or super intellectual in memory and so on. But how would you like a product that is actually proven to help you in terms of cognitive abilities, enhance your creativity, improve your memory, yeah. helps you to learn the language, balance your emotional state, give the kids the control over what they want to create, like the bubbles that she talked yeah. about just now. And all these proven benefits yeah. just comes down to one product, which you don't have to pay thousands for it, and it's just music. Mm -hmm. But you have to inc incorporate it into education. Because I remember when I used to learn music when I was young, it was more of an obligation. Yeah. Like, I felt I was obligated to play the three pieces in the whole year so that I can pass my examination. But when my daughter, I mean speaking from a parent's perspective, she's learning in Fairview now music, they get to create music for um, animations, yeah. for video games. Wow. Yeah. The scope has broadened. Yes. 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 So it now, now it becomes that music is part of the expression of their life, of their learning. Mm -hmm. And they feel that it's their product. Yeah. And this is what I like about the kind of music education that we're talking about. So, yes, there are schools who incorporate music education. And like what Brandon said just now, we blow the recorder, we clap on the castanets, we bang the triangles when we're in school, or we sing simple songs. And that's what music education is to most of the schools. Yeah. But in Fairview, we do the Everyone's a Musician program and it's incorporated into the curriculum, which means that they learn conceptual and instrumental. How do you utilize the instrumental to put out the message that you're learning from the conceptual part? And that could be maths, English, science, whole range. You yeah. just said animation. Yeah. Are you, animation is never just what you watch. What's the story? What's the theme? What's the, how is the technical behind mm -hmm. it? All of that comes into it. So it's not just writing the piece of music for um, a Play-Doh type character or a cosplay character. That's just one tiny section. Right. So the whole element that the child learns comes home with a force of different ideas. They might never be professional musicians. That's not what Fairview International is doing. Um, great, we do, but yeah. no. no. We just want them to love <laughs> yeah. music. And take those different concepts, we call it, okay. and being able to put them into a different walks of life. As I said, whether it's math mathematical, musical equations in that sense, or it's a scientific aspect. It can go that way. It doesn't have to be just boom. Oh yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Like I remember in school, um, so I went to a Chinese school. So how I learned how to multiply is actually by si kind of singing a song because mm -hmm. there is a rhythm to it. And I think what people forget that music is just not Singing is just not. Can you sing the song? Can you sing the song? Yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a rhythm. I think you still yes. do that now. So, yeah. yeah. Even when um, you know, in, in in terms of prayers as well, you you sing songs, yeah. you sing hymns, you sing uh, sorry, you sing hymns and whatever else. Um, I actually want to know because you talked a little bit about being a parent. Um, how can actually parents sort of help to support or help to um, integrate music into schools? Yeah, because, in terms of yeah. just buying them their musical instruments, you know, some parents are there, they will sit with the students or with the kids to, in, in a, a word that I would use is like formulate in that sense. Yeah. So, how do we do this here? Well, thinking back, I remember uh, my mom used to ask me, how come I don't hear you practicing on the piano? I mean, I, I've been spending money mm -hmm. every month, but I don't hear you playing the piano at all. Reflecting on it, I felt at that time I didn't want to play because Every time I do play, they give me feedback like, why are you playing this way? You should play this way or it's not good enough. Oh, you mean I have been paying and this is what you produce? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so in my mind, sorry mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, in my mind, I'm thinking uh, I was practicing and you know, you need to give me time. So over these years, I've learned that as a parent, uh, we need to allow the child to express themselves in whatever ways that they feel they are able to. And music provides that avenue. Because yeah. music, when you play it, or um, even arts expression, 
you can express it from different perspectives. Yeah. So it can sound the same music, you play it slowly or you play it fast, can have different meaning to different people. So as a parent, I feel that we should support them in terms of allowing them to try it out on themselves. But what I like about this Everyone's a Musician is because it's incorporated in the curriculum. So they feel when they go to school, if they have to do a project, it is something that I do together with my friends. And it is part of assessment, but there is no examination pressure mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Because you know, they, they learn about water, so how do you express water flow with music, for example? Yeah. So as a parent, I just need to sit down and listen to my daughter talking about what she learned at school today, and then say, oh, oh this is how, what you learned? Oh, so that's how it is. We don't even need to go in depth, like give our opinion or something. But being there, listening to them, allowing them to tell us what they learned for the day, that's what they need, they do our get, attention. We do get structure, so the music teachers, and we have over 24 full-time music teachers, so it's not one in, one out. Mm -hmm. So with across them, they are trained. So they're all trained in a complete IB way on both sides. So it means then, if a parent comes and says, how do I, I don't know anything about a trombone, well, what do I do? Yeah. yeah. And that happens, like, do I put it in? What, 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 which way to go? So that's fine. We, we've done like everything from videos, and like, I don't know, the cookbook parents, what to do, and the fact sheet thingy, we do all of that for everybody. And then, yeah, in their lessons, like any other subject they will have like a beginning and middle and end but around it is how they work together and IB that's where we help them so of course then when they go home they have that formula they know how to do so the success the two stars and a wish the two bits where they know they can be able to show mum and go hey this worked really well and the wish is like a little bit more it's like the polite way of practice that part of it gives them that momentum to say right well if I want to be here on my academic but I want to go a little bit further I know how to go on but that is down to the training of the music teachers which is also very different for them to teach out of three pieces of music suddenly not the three notes of the music but the theme of the music on yeah heat substance of sheep and that is one of the units as well as water cycles that is another one of the units wow. that's not water the cycle. types of things that you would normally have of a teacher which is going today I'm going to teach you tea tea coffee yeah. tea <laughs> those sorts of things the rhythms so that's where it's a flip for everybody, but do they excel? Yes. Do they get a different variety on it? Yes. Do the parents learn something a bit different? Yeah, I'd yes, say. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's just practical, and the kids sometimes they may not have the confidence to perform yet, yeah. yep. but when it comes to theory and they have this conceptual part, they can talk about it, and then they can tell their parents about it. So that's where their interest starts to come in. Yeah, yeah it reminds me of um, how I observe my son, for example, playing the piano. The thing is, he has never been to a piano lesson before. Oh, wow. He learned it from YouTube. Oh, wow. Out of, wow. Out of, his, <laughs> out of his own interest. So, my mum <laughs> used to laugh at me and say that, hey, your son is playing better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he goes for the, the high-level ones, the professional right. ones, like great eight pieces. Okay. And uh, he likes those music. And he can play, really. So, what I'm saying is, as a parent, we need to bring out their interests, mm -hmm. even as an educator, we bring out their interests by first uh, teaching them to appreciate music mm -hmm. and not just banging on practical, you know, like how yeah. um, some teachers may take the pencil and yeah. tuk, 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 your oh, fingers, you know, oh, yeah. if you're not okay, doing it's well. It's a traditional yeah. way. Put your hands on the piano now, boom! One time. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but definitely not in our school. <laughs> <laughs> but not here, right? Not okay, here, here. so uh, let's have both of your perspective on this, yeah. okay? So in terms of having music in your education, you know, we have this saying that uh, sounds something like this. Uh, not everybody is musically inclined. Yeah. yeah. So does that mean they're losing out in this or let's have both of you say in this? I'm going to let you go first. Okay. <laughs> uh, it is true that not everybody is musically inclined. But uh, according to some of the videos I've watched, neuroscientists have proven that we all have a rhythm mm -hmm. yeah. in us. Uh, I guess it's also the exposure that we have before we are six years old, while our brain is still in development stage. Because um, I notice um, from my kids, they, they never sang. I mean, I never made them sing yeah. for all these years. And then one day, they had to sing in school. And somehow, they can get the tempo and the rhythm just right. Oh, wow. And I felt it was because when they were young, 
we used to sing lullaby and we used to beat to certain tempos. Mm -hmm. It helps. So I think the musically inclined part is not that we are not. It's mm -hmm. just that some of us has a higher connectivity when we were younger and some of us has least. But music is something that you, like everything else, there's a saying saying that if you don't know it, you can't love it. Right. So for you to be musically inclined, you must first be exposed yeah. to music, to experience it. And that's why we started our kids from, yeah. we start our kids from five years, five old, years old so that they can get to know and understand and appreciate. Mm -hmm. Then they will be musically inclined. Yeah. All right. And it's the okay. taste. Yeah. If you think about every person here and everywhere, everyone has a taste. Not everyone is into, I don't know, bulk, okay? Most people <laughs> won't have a clue who that is. And then there'll be others who are just like, no, I just want my heavy metal, that's all I want. I don't care about anything else. Yeah. Then cater. Mm -hmm. If you cater for everyone's taste, or at least give a sample of that taste, then as Michelle said, then you know. Then you also appreciate the wider picture because music is not just one form. It's over 300 different styles. Most of those styles here, okay, maybe not all being heard, maybe not all be actually particularly correct to hear either, but at the same time, they are there. So if you, just because you might not have a taste or an, an, an appetite for one, doesn't mean that's everything. And it's same when people say about, oh, I've only got two left feet, so I can only actually technically, I can't dance. That, no, people still move, you still bob, you still wiggle. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. exactly the same thing. It just depends on where your confidence is because you've had a chance to give it a go. If you're yeah. never giving it a go, you're never gonna know. All right. Okay. So thank you so much, Kristen. On that note, uh, we're gonna we're gonna close um, on that lovely note. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you are actually you know, into arts, uh, be it theatre, music, performance, workshop, or whatever. I want to recommend you guys to check out Dominus. Thank you so much for creating this space for all our creative heads out there. You guys can check out the space. And right after this, somebody who has probably better, um, mu who are more musically inclined than us. Cool. <laughs> Why? We're going to end the when? show with a special performance, so don't go anywhere. <laughs>